Hello everybody! Hello! Today we have a top 10 for you. Ooh. We are looking at top 10 big board games for two players. Mm -hmm. And it's a revisit. It is actually, yeah. We did this list um, probably a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, and obviously we played a lot more big board games since then. So um, yeah, and, and from memory, if you've seen that last one, so the idea being that most board games for two players or games for two players tend to be quite small or they're just card games. And so we did a top 10 um, of big board games where you want to play a big sprawling board game with a big board. Not built for two. But that's right, yeah. They play well down well. to two well. Yeah. They, do, they are good for two players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's what this top 10 is. And it's yeah. a revised new edition because we've played Fresh. more games. Yeah, so without further ado, let's get to it. Number 10. Mm-hmm. Okay, so number 10, straight into it. Um, this one's gone down a little bit for us mm -hmm. uh, over the last few years, um, but it's still in our top 10. I mean, the thing still is, with, with all of our games, we could probably put 20 games in the top 10. So that, that one doesn't really work. work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so some have slipped off and some are still, you know, dropping down or whatever. This one's but hanging in there. Yeah, so this is Lords of Waterdeep. So obviously a classic. Is that a Lord? Is it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> classic um, worker placement game and it's sort of entry level, so it's a good one for us to begin with. Mm -hmm. It was probably our first one we played. It's the first one you made me play. Yeah. It was a bit. <laughs> But it, yeah, it's very good. Well, yeah, because the Dungeons it. and Dragons theme and, yeah, and that put me off. Uh, world that it's based in put you off, didn't yes, it? But it's it nothing about Dungeons and Dragons, really. It's just a theme, and it's a worker placement yep. game where you're putting out um, workers trying to claim um, clerics and, and mm -hmm. warriors and stuff like that to, to send them on quests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the quests are new victory points. It's pretty yep. much the name of the game, really. Your your worker placementing. Yep. To get quests like, achieved, like. uh, um, uh, and there is a score around the outside that you're um, yeah. uh, scoring on, it's and really you thing. can lay out new buildings and build new buildings that then people can place their workers on. And yeah. if if your opponent places a worker on on your building, then you get extra yeah. bonus as well. All those okay. kind of little idiots. For me, it's not as and it was not um, as off putting as the rules made out. Once yeah. you play it, you think, ah, oh, cool. That's Fairly nice straightforward, yeah. yeah. So a nice simple worker placement game, yeah. uh, and that's why it's still hanging on in there. Hanging yeah. There. Number <laughs> ten, Lords of Waterdeep. <laughs> <Obviously>. <laughs> Okay, number nine. Um, this is a game which we love the theme. Mm. We, are, we, we love this theme is close to our hearts. Uh, you are playing a Roman mm. Mm. patrician mm. and you are trying to make your district in Rome flourish. Mm. This is Carpe Diem. Uh, we love this game because it's got uh, your own little board that you're working on, your own little district mm. and we like the fact there's two phases of the game where you're trying to populate your district with Chickens! I love the look of chickens. <laughs> Little miniature chickens and fish. I, I don't think you're actually the best trying to populate your district with chickens necessarily. I am. <laughs> I am. And um, once you've got your, once the rounds are complete with the with the tiles in that area, you then go to phase two, and this is about when you claim all your victory points, mm. depending on what you've got in the district. Yeah, it's got two. Like you say, I mean, there's the bit where you're claiming your tiles, which is a little sort of a, a round deal where you're trying again worker placement, isn't it? Yeah, you're pr yeah, pretty much. I guess yeah. you're putting your worker where you want to claim the tiles yeah. and build, your, and that's kind of Carcassonne sort of styley building your city. Yeah, my city as well. Nice, yeah, yeah, okay. and then uh, and then you go to the second phase where you're like you say claiming your victory points, depending on what you've managed to build. So I would pick the ones with have like the most chickens, chickens. <laughs> yes. obviously obviously <laughs> um so yeah, yeah it's, it's a really nice kind of two layered game and you play those mm -hmm. rounds a couple of times you're trying to claim victory points for being clever with your builds and mm -hmm. how you kind of uh, put things adjacent to other things and yeah. in different rows Great little scoreboard around the edge as well which yeah like really neat little yeah. neat little couple of mechanisms lots of lots of things going on it looks great on the board because of the yeah. the way that it's kind of drawn if you like the artistry mm -hmm. on it uh, mm -hmm. it's really nice um yeah good game lovely carpe diem number nine. nine sweet all righty then so number eight this is one of my favorite games not so much yours which i mean this is why it's number eight because yeah, it goes down to tim and be three yeah, Two. at least yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing we're kind of leveling thing. off our joint games <laughs> to uh, yeah, yeah. You've knocked it it's down to eight. Right. Anyway, so it's this game is right. a great one of my favourites. This is Tikal. Um, 
uh, I love this game. We like this game. Yeah, I said it's a game. Um, but it's the point is, it's a big board game uh, that, mm -hmm. that plays well too. So basically, you're. Um, it's an action point game where you you pay um, a certain number of action points to take action. So you've got ten to choose from. Mm -hmm. You could use five to go and explore and three to dig, something that kind of thing. So, so the action point system works really well in here. Mm -hmm. People say that there are too many action points, so it gives you too much freedom. But you know, yeah. whatever. It's it's a great game. I like it. So the basic premise is you're exploring the kind of I don't know where it is. Um, South, South American Machu Picchu sort of, um, Pagan. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah, you're exploring a jungle trying to find the temples and when you find the temples you want to claim those temples. Like uh, Raiders, yeah, Raiders lost Raiders well, yeah. <laughs> uh, The higher the temple is the more points it scores you and you use your action points to move around the board, there's a big scoreboard around the outside, very colourful, mm -hmm. um, nice sort of you know the gr lush green and as you go through the jungle you hack away it starts as a yeah, big like jungle of trees and you hack away and it exposes the clearings and, mm -hmm. and the, the buildings and so on. Mm -hmm. You can sort of fly into the middle part of the board rather than going into the edge if you put out camps later yeah. on sort of thing. Uh, th it does have a two-player variant which kind of restricts oh, the size yeah. of the board. It's a bit too restricting. For yeah it was too so. restricting so we played it as the full board mm -hmm. which takes a lot longer but or a little bit longer but it, it gives you the it's full experience game. yeah for yeah. sure because you get that chance to fly into the middle of the board which you kind of tend to not do yeah. when you've got a restricted board so yeah. um, it plays a lot better playing the full game so don't mm -hmm. play the two player variant play the full game as a two works really well. If you even want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, uh, not quite favorite. It's my favorite, not quite favorite <laughs> game. Uh, I'm not so, a big fan of the theme. That's all. Yeah, I know, but it's a good game, but, isn't it? Yeah, it plays it's well, one. and it looks great on a table. We got two different versions as well. So there's a uh, the the, um, the sort of very flat version, and then there was a later version um, that was brought out by I can't remember the manufacturer's name. Oh, yeah. Down there, I can see it. Uh, Super Meeples, yeah. Super, Super Meeples. Meeples. Super Meeples brought out those really nice sort of resin, big sort of uh, Machu, Picchu, Machu Picchu type temples. Okay. Fab, yeah, really nice. So, works well. Mm -hmm. Very nice game. Mm -hmm. Tikal. Number eight. Should be higher. Okay, straight in at number seven, although it should be number five. We apologise. Number seven, <laughs> number seven is I make five, no apology. <laughs> five tribes. <laughs> ah, I see. Great I thought we were doing a pop charts for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Great little days of wonder game. This is a game where reading the rules, I was a bit. Ah, I don't want to play this game. <laughs> but once you play, you don't. The rules aren't that bad. Yeah, it all becomes very clear. And so all, that, yeah, yeah, everything you land on tells you what you need to do. So yeah, you don't need yeah. To W remember everything. That's true. Actually, the iconography is really helpful, mm -hmm. isn't it? So yeah, this is a great, this is a variable board. Mm -hmm. uh, you lay out your, I think, it's six by six um, tiles, and every time you lay them out, they're different, obviously. So that makes the variable board. And then you've got a massive bag of meeples that you just populate the board with three on each tile. Random. And yeah, randomly. And so you've got all these different coloured meeples, and then you're picking up a, a tile's worth of meeples and moving them along and dropping one off at each location you go past, and then grabbing. The colours of, of those meeples on that landing mm -hmm. tile. That's kind of it. Mm -hmm. And the way that the game sort of plays out and the changes that move as you go along, it's, just, you it's just constantly changing. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're buying genies by uh, uh, acquiring gold, and gold yep. is victory points. It's just a, a lot going it on. It's a bit AP. Yeah. But well, it's, it's not off putting. No. It's not off putting, like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. Earlier on in the game, it's like it. that, isn't it? Because you're not sure, there's not kind of don't massive scoring opportunities. Yeah, and you're just thinking, well, how shall I start? But once yeah. the game starts to open up and you see, you mm -hmm. know, where you're going to make your most points and stuff like that, really mm -hmm. great. And, and sort of different um, different player, different meeple powers, depending mm -hmm. on what colour they are, you know. So, um, yellow red blue green white they, they do different things yeah. they allow you to do different things so you change your tactics really great game mm -hmm. and i understand why you it seems yeah. for, like it's going to be for non-players non-gamers it could seem a bit mm. uh, overwhelming but it's not but it's not once you start playing great and it yeah. works really well too as well cause, um it, maybe initially it, it could be Mm. Feel like my parents or something like that, they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they'd get into it. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Good game, nice choice. Yeah, number seven. Well, boy, Sorry, it's not five. <laughs> number seven. It would be five if it was me, but it's a joint one. Just like, no. That's true. <laughs> number okay. seven, seven, no, no. Seven tribes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Alrighty then, number six already. Um, so this was really high on our last uh, it's top down ten. A bit. It's gone down. It's my fault really, um, because I've kind of got a bit more into some of the other games, so mm -hmm. it's dropped down. Uh, you probably put it right out the top. Yeah, there, I'm so. Abuse to it. Um, so this is not necessarily a big board game, as in a big board, but it feels like a big board game because mm -hmm. of the way that the, the game plays and yep, what you're using. Components. Yeah, um, this is Imhotep, or as we say, Imhotep. <laughs> you have to say it like that. Yeah. Um, so Imhotep, great. There is an Imhotep duel, mm -hmm. which will play, obviously, well, as a two-player, but it's mm -hmm. a totally different game. We recommend playing Imhotep. The big, the big yeah, game. yeah, yeah. Imhotep duel is good for taking a holiday, maybe. Yes, um, it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it gives you a different game entirely, does, really. Yeah. Well, no, it's kind of the same, I guess, but it plays differently. It knocks some costs, isn't it? Yeah, really, yeah. Um, so Imhotep, um, Variable sort of setup board. You can play it two different sides of the board to give mm -hmm. you different games, and there's an expansion you can get which gives you different boards again. And all you're doing basically is placing. You've got these big blocks, which are big granite Pyramid or marble blocks. blocks. Yeah, that you're putting on a boat, sailing up the Nile, and trying to build different things like um, a burial chamber, uh, obelisk. obelisk, pyramids, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. different points are awarded for different ways that you build those things. Yeah. Very simple, but there's quite a lot of take that in it, which is why quite you're really of, good um, at it. Tactics, yeah, I'm quite good at this game. This is my game. Yeah, because what you tend to do is you f fill a ship with your coloured stones, and you want to send them to the pyramid to build a pyramid, and yeah. your op opposition there will sell you to the um, the tomb or something, and you have to offload in the tomb rather than the pyramid, so yeah. you don't score what you wanted to yeah. score. Really clever mm -hmm. is. and very good tactile feeling with satisfying, these stones satisfying and, you know, building your little obelisk yeah. in the pyramids yeah I mean yeah. we played it where you know you play it at night and you get a shadow cast from your obelisk that looks like an obelisk it's amazing yeah it's good <laughs> theming yeah really good so works well at two yep. Immortem Immortem number six <laughs> you don't have to say number six like that <laughs> Number five! We're halfway there already! It's been emotional. <laughs> this is brand new to the top ten. Mm. They're very exciting. But not a new game. Not a new game. No. We just slipped it in there to the top ten yeah. at number five. Yeah. This is a game where you don't spend points, you spend time. Mm. Ooh. And you're excavating for the goodies. Um, this is Thebes. Yes. It's a good one. We like Thebes. I mean, they're. There are two different versions of this game, mm. Thebes, the bigger game, and Thebes, the Tomb Raiders, which is a smaller game. Mm -hmm. Quite like, um, um, we like both, but obviously this is about big board games, and this is like that. So you've got a big board. Um, you're basically, and as you were alluding to, the, the very unusual thing about this game mm. is that you there are 52 weeks around the outside of the board, and you spend time with your marker mm. to do things in the game. So you might spend four weeks to go on a dig, and then you're in the front on that time track and the person at the back then has as many weeks as they want to catch up and mm. they keep going until they overtake you and then it's your go. So that And the more weeks you spend, the more likely you might find something else. Yeah, you might find more good. Yeah. But it's that balancing act of I don't want to spend too it's much a, time. It's a really nice couple of uh, uh, mechanisms in this mm. game and that, that one is very unusual, don't see that very often. And then there's this other aspect where you go to a dig site and you have to earn the right to go to the dig site by going around the board and collecting knowledge and so and on and so on. Yeah, and you have to have permits to go there. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you go there and you as you say, depend on the amount of time you want to spend there and the amount of per, um, knowledge that you've built up mm. you turn a little dial on your little board it tells you how long and how many how items many? you can take out yeah. of the bag so you have a bag for that dig site which has got loads of articles in them mm -hmm. some of them you pull out and it's just rubbish it's just rubble you get pulled dirt yeah, yeah others you pull out and it's a great big treasure like the Tutankhamun mask or something like that yeah, so yeah. really really great um, sort of exciting moment when you pull out of the bag and yeah all you're, I've got is dirt. No, yeah <laughs> spent 12 weeks there and you've got nothing <laughs> Um, but that's a great theme. It works really well. Yeah. Some people find that frustrating that you could spend a lot of time and effort and then put out nothing. No, but I like that. <laughs> you know, that's part of the theme. It's so like well. real world. Yeah, yeah, I think Sam Healy hated that about this oh. game but way back in the day. But, you know, I Sorry, love Sam, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, great game. But it feels like a big ball game and it feels great fun mm -hmm. doing all that digging thing. You know, yeah. it's really good. Good game. Mm -hmm. It's my usual mechanisms. We it really is. like it. Um, but we also like the other game as well. Thebes Tomb Raiders. Yes. Different animal, smaller game. Thebes. Bye -bye. 
All right, then, number four. So this is um, this is quite a, a a real world sort of theme on One this of my game. Faves, yeah, this you is. like this uh, worker placement. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the first one you made me play, or one of the first ones. One of the first, I think, uh, Lords of Waterdeep probably first. Mm -hmm. But this this is very simple in concept, mm -hmm. very easy to grasp, but lots going on. Yes. And you have lots of different options. And this is Pan Am. Love it. You you really like this game. Love don't you? it. Love the theme. It's very kind of forties, fifties, catch me if you can film. Yeah. Love all that, and it's obviously in, it includes a bit of like the the, the theme from the war time. Yeah, you know, wars broken out, so stocks in Panama have gone down. Yeah, I like all that real world theme. Yeah, because that's the that's the main thing in the game is you're trying to buy stock, and mm -hmm. the one with the most stock at the end wins. Mm -hmm. And you do that by buying airlines, buying and routes. routes. Yeah. yeah, and then eventually you want to kind of sell your routes to Pan Am, get more money, buy more stock. Yeah, it's just yeah. that you kind of you you make money as you build your routes. I like the worker placement of it. Yeah. The, way, the fact that you can just concentrate on getting your airports, concentrate on getting your aircraft. You haven't mm. got to do a certain thing. Yeah, and you're it's not too much blocking at, at two players. It works fairly no. well. I mean, when you play at a higher player count, there's a bit more kind of blocking, but you, you don't get blocked out. You just have to pay more for those spaces. Yes. Whereas or you when get you, a smaller plane. Yeah, yeah, when you play at two players, so it's um, it's not mm. quite so blocky, but it works really well. It's a nice kind of balance. It looks really good. Yeah, we really nice. You've got these the little theme. aircraft and stuff. Yeah, yeah, really nice game. Love it. Very simple to pick up. Lots to do. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Pan Am. Oh. Number three, we're getting exciting. Now, you wanted a big game. This is a pretty big game. That's a huge game. Foundations of Rome. <laughs> this is the biggest game we've ever played. I mean, yeah. it takes up a whole Calyx unit. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Um, this is obviously Rome. Love the theme. Massive game. <laughs> Massive game. It's full size, basically. This is straight in at number three. Yeah, we've not had this one before on our top ten, because um, no. it's a fairly new game, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, as far as big board games for two players, you can't beat this, can you really? Bigger, really? Like, it's literally life size. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. It works really well, it too. And it's just yes. basically a kind of Tetris um, game. Is, yeah. Poly on me, no, can't ever say that. But but in three D, so it, mm -hmm. you know it's got and that kind of. And they're really great miniatures, aren't they? I say mm. miniatures, they're not miniatures. <laughs> huge <-tures>. um, <laughs> huge <-tures. laughs> Really good huge -tures. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is basically you've got a grid uh, and you're buying deeds to buy spaces on the grid, and then you're placing out your buildings on those deeds when you own them. Very simple. Three actions per turn. You can yep. buy a deed. You can take some money from Rome to to build up your stock of money, or you can build a building. That's pretty mm. much it. And the scoring is good. Some there's certain um, type of buildings. It's civic buildings. Yeah, civic buildings they, are only victory points. Some some of them score for how many other buildings are next to them as mm. well. So that's that's very Tetrisy. Yeah, mm. lots of different options that you might kind of want to move around in your mind as you're trying to kind of mm -hmm. see the best way to score. But mm. there are two scoring tracks as well. One's um, the, the actual victory points so when yeah. you score civic buildings you get victory points mm -hmm. and you go up on that point track but then there's a population track as well which yes. when you build buildings for your population to live in the sort of domiciles uh that track goes up and there are bonus points at the end of each era there yeah, are three eras yeah for the most population so you're on rich points for that so you're trying yeah. to get your your people up but you're trying to get your civic buildings up it's mm. all lots going on and doesn't seem like there's lots going on there doesn't no it it's, very yeah, it's very simple Works well at two. Um, yeah. It's not quite as uh, constricting at two as it is, say, for five, because you're not all fighting yeah. in the same place. You're just two of you fighting over the same place. But uh, later on in the game, it certainly gets very tight. And it does. Yeah, it's a really good game at two. Works really well, mm -hmm. but obviously huge. So this it's is perfect for this yeah. list. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Depends <laughs> why it's number three. Yeah, I mean, why isn't it number one? Mm, <gasps> interesting. What could possibly top it? There you go. Foundations of Rome. All right, so then. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, this is number two, and this was number two last time on our list, actually. Mm. So it's held its ground very mm, well. well Has it gone up and gone down? Well um, this is a super, super colourful um, yes. game. 
so Quaint. pretty. Yeah, Quaint. 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 Very pretty, very pastoral to mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. So much going on, so many options. This is Crown of Amara. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew it. I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> you were expecting me to expect you to do it. Yeah. Um, so this is a great game. It's got two separate boards. One is kind of the, the city and one is the countryside. And it's just kind of a, like a... Um, a roundel where you're moving your uh, mm. worker placement type scenario around the various points yes. and you move those people by you've got a set of cards and you allocate a card to mm. a one two or three a slot three um, and if you put it in a three you move three on one of the, the boards you take the action where you land, but you also take the action of the card that you laid in that slot. So in the country, in, in the country, you're trying to gather resources. Good yeah. Resources in yeah. the city, you're trying to sell them. Well, action them. Action yeah, build, them, build buildings. Build uh, buildings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. your main aim is to make your not area. Your your uh, yeah area, area <laughs> of <laughs> your <laughs> of your town yeah. flourish. Yeah. To show the king who is retiring that you you should be the next yeah, no, yeah. you should be the next king. <laughs> True. But you don't get king straight away if, if you get you, yeah you uh, get raised up through baron and yeah, all that sort of thing. Yeah, you've got to earn your way. You're right. Yeah, king. you have to earn his trust. By making and so your town flourish. Yeah, but there's this kind of as a strange scoring thing yes. goes on as well. So you have yes. two different score tracks, or it's one track, but you're doing it in two different ways. One is for your building the town buildings, mm -hmm. and one is for feeding your people. So if you don't mm -hmm. do both, one gets drop behind on your score track and you score on the lowest one so if you just ignore feeding the people when you get to the end of the game you'll score on the how many people you fed yeah. track which will be rubbish so you kind of want to keep them both keep them in tandem going. really as, yeah. as much as you can and then obviously one will be a couple of points less than the other and that's the one you will score mm -hmm. so that's unusual mm -hmm. so you have to think about all these things you've got loads of different people that you can hire in to help you that you can buy yeah, specialists as they call them so you can you, experts yeah, experts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you buy those in, and they give you special powers to maybe make more bread or things like that. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really, really loads going on. Lots of options. But not too confusing. But no. But a really lovely worker yeah. placement game that, that is very, very pastoral to play. It is. Nice it's Sunday afternoon. Almost like game. calming. Yeah. Even though there's lot, lot going on. It's, yeah. yeah. It's very. Cute. Really nice. We'd really like this one. It stayed at Scrain at number yeah, two. Well done. Crown of Amara. Not number one. Mm. Okay, we've made it. Do you want to do a drum roll? <laughs> Number one. I can't do a drum roll. No, you're well. true. Yeah. <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> Number one is a role playing game. Oh. Theme is mwah. Mm. What's about food? Yes. <laughs> this <laughs> nice. uh, happens to be my, my first, not yours, no. my first 10 out of 10 yeah. clean sweep board game. True. So it that. has to be number one. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was my like first nine and a half. I think. You're nine, yeah, you're very yeah. close. But so it's we my were, ten. Yeah, so this is obviously going to be our top ten number one game, but mm -hmm. it's also quite a big game, isn't it? I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's not, not as big as this puppy. No, it's it's <laughs> not a big game to start, but you kind of expand it. We better say what it is, I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> Destiny. Destinies is our number one big board game for two players. Love. It. Yeah, I mean, this is designed for one to three players, one so three. Uh, two players probably ideal, ideal I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, not a big board game Love it. when you start, you start but you, you do expand. Fold out a massive board. Yeah, that's right. But you do expand your tiles and board. And you've got your own play. board you're working on as well. Yeah, but Cards it's a big, everywhere. it's a big concept game. It's a big feeling yeah. game, and it's a big exploration game. So yeah, it's a it, big event. It, that you're it doing. is our number one because you've got the app. Game. Because you use an app with it as well that guides you through the game. That makes it feel like a big... Yeah, I mean, if you've not game. seen this, it is basically an RPG in a box, right? I mean, they say that on the back of the box. It's yep. it's like Skyrim. It's like Skyrim, if you've played but that. you're playing it on a board. Yeah. On you, the table. You've basically got your character that has a destiny to fulfil. Mm. Well, two. You've got two destinies. There's, there's two so ways can... to the same destiny. Oh, I think, yeah, isn't but yeah, you've yeah. got to pick which way you do it. So, yeah, you've got to you've got to achieve your destiny by doing one of these couple of options mm. along the way that is secret, nobody else knows. Um, although none of the information is secret when the app tells you anything, all that's public information, mm -hmm. but basically you're just exploring uh, and there's a fog of war of the tiles that they're turned face down until you go into that tile and you turn them over. Mm -hmm. 
different characters get put out on the board, different mm. articles, different places to visit, and then it's all working on a QR code system on the app. Which I really like Because this is well. done by Lucky Duck Games, Lucky and Duck. it's very similar to Chronicles of Crime in that yes. respect. But then it plays similar to Mansion of Madness. So it's Without all the killing of all. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a massive fan of, oh, yeah, I've rolled a three, he monsters rolled a four, he's killed me. Yeah, that yeah, so it's more like it's more investigative than Sorry if you do murder, murdering. So. It's more like, more like Skyrim. I'm going to wander, I'm going to go over to this tavern and speak to this guy and yeah. see if you can help me with my quest yeah i'm yeah, gonna go I to i'm gonna go to the um the, the inn and, and have drink. a drink yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing yeah <laughs> so but yeah great game really lots going on uh really plays well it too obviously yes. um and really there are there's a sort of whole campaign you can go and there are expansions you can buy with more campaigns just a fab 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 game with brilliant miniatures I was and um, the whole way through playing yeah you were I'm i mean this was really really great game so that's why it's got to our number one this time <laughs> new on the list because it's a new game for us brand new in um, at number one yeah straight in at number one as they say on well, the pop like charts. Games. yeah so uh, there we go hopefully you've played this game and hopefully you like some of the top you 10 haven't? Given you. Play it. yeah definitely so um good. Put a few comments down below. Let us know what you think of this top ten. Uh, yes. Tell us if there's anything we Do you missed. Agree? Do you I mean, disagree? As we said, uh, we could have done a top twenty, yes. a top ten. Yes, that um, was hard. There's quite a lot of honor honourable mentions. We won't go into them now. We, <laughs> Small we, world. We, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Slipped into number eleven. <laughs> Small world. Anyway, but yeah. So uh, <laughs> there it is um, our top ten of uh, the big, big board, board game, game for two players. <laughs> Anyway, the dishwasher's finished, so we better finish there. Signing off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, week, summer, yes. whatever. Happy gaming to you. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Check out our other top tens.